Hello guys and welcome back. So let's talk about the lighting here. We have only two lights for now and I don't intend to have that light here yet. So I'm gonna delete that. This light serves as the key light, okay? So one thing I always think about when I'm doing the lighting is to think about what um, what the, uh, the actual environment is, right? So in this, in this case, uh, I'm thinking about, you know, the environment is like it's dark and it's kind of like uh, during night and then uh, there are some really subtle moonlight coming from the top and I kind of wanted to make the character feels a little bit more uh, mysterious so I'm making the shadows to cover the eye uh, a bit more yeah like that okay and then because it's moonlight I'm thinking maybe it is a bit darker, so I can move the light maybe a little bit further away. And then the color can be more cold, so more bluish kind of like color in this case. All right, hit OK. You can see how that dramatically changes the feeling of the character, right, like in the dark. Cool. Um, yeah, that's actually already pretty cool, but we're not seeing the edge of the model anymore and so we can add some rim light in this case uh, so I'm gonna drag in a point light here to the side and position it somewhere behind now that's where you can think about what that light is okay maybe it's you know behind him there is like uh, candles and stuff so the light will be more like orange-ish okay and maybe we can make it also mobile Right, we can make it stronger. Okay, and maybe I can uh, also check the shadow thing we were having problem with earlier, the bias. Shrink that down, you can see how much it's changing the shadowing will make it more accurate. So if that's the candle, I assume it should be a little bit higher than the normal height of a person. Okay, and holding on Alt and drag to create another one because there are two candles <laughs> in this case uh, from the corridor. Maybe he's standing there. All right, and that's the rim light. Um, maybe this one can be a little bit higher so it's not all symmetrical. And everything still feels a little bit too dark. Maybe he is standing also uh, somewhere like uh, in the room eventually and there are candles and there is also a fireplace so I can drag this light and holding it out and drag to have a duplication I'm moving on to the side of his face uh, you know to serve as like a fill light from there and again lower down the shadow bias so we have proper shadowing uh, too much actually causes trouble. We can also change the this one uh, called the contact shadow lens. Drag that up. That's gonna help a little bit to to make some contact shadow. The fireplace is of course lower, so I'm gonna drag it down to the bottom, uh, more or less. Uh, not that much of a bias in this case. All right, and maybe give it uh, some more dramatic saturation here. Okay, more red. All right. Uh, maybe a little bit less saturated. Yeah, because it's kind of like being too strong, which makes everything else weak, too weak in this case. All right, I'm trying to make the rim light to be more like a rim light. So maybe over there. If I cannot achieve the rim going across the whole hair, I can have a copy of that and move it down there too. Maybe there are multiple candles <laughs> from different places. All right. So when, when it comes to something called the three point lighting, it's not just three lights exactly you know count wise it's like three different different functioning lights one is the key light 
Now another one is the fill light, another one is the rim light, and rim light can be achieved with multiple lights. Um, okay, and sometimes it's helpful to take a look at how photographers lighting their stuff, uh, because that's actually going to help us a whole lot on how the lighting can be done with you know the proper type of lights. I'm only using point light <laughs> in this case. Uh, there could be better ways. Uh, Right. Let me see how it looks like if I drag it down a little bit. I kind of want that mysterious feeling. Maybe just shift the direction of the light a little bit. Okay. How about making it appear a bit more? It's not bad actually. Um, Definitely want to have some more dramatic contrast on the face. Yeah, maybe something like this. Okay. And because of that, maybe I can go uh, try to make the subsurface scattering more stronger. So I'm going to go for the skin material instance and then double click to open the profile and make it a little bit more stronger still want to have more flashy kind of like results okay and maybe I can drag the exposure now to make it a little bit more brighter here okay now you can see when I move the camera closer there's a lot of distortion the front of, of the face is like really big while the back just shrinks in dramatically that's not ideal so we can go to the perspective and oh, actually this drop down here and change the field of view to be something smaller like uh, 50 uh, that's going to reduce the amount of distortion in this case which makes the render much more lesser distorted okay now when I look at it I'm, maybe my rim light is too much of a area here so I'm gonna drag it backwards uh, maybe this one also this one also and that, that those highlights appears to be a bit too strong let me delete that maybe just one light is fun I do have another one over there. Maybe delete that too. Don't want it to be too complicated in this case. Yeah. All right, we can hit F11 now to take a look at the whole picture. All right, that's not bad. Um, so afterwards, we can also do post processing. We haven't done any of that yet. So we're going to go for. Uh, volume here and then search for uh, post process volume and drag it over to the scene and we want it to be affecting everything so let me drag this guy over to the outside and F11 to make this full screen and then I can drag this details panel back <laughs> alright so things I want to change here is uh, underneath the volume settings it's gonna be infinite uh, okay and then we can go to the uh, post-processing of the um, camera lens effect. Uh, what we can do is we can go to the uh, chromatic aberration here and we can have a little bit of that. Okay. All right. And then we can try to change I don't think there's a need to have vignette, but maybe we can have some grin here. It's just a little bit. All right. It's jittering here. All right, cool. Just to make it feels like more like a camera shot. Uh, white balance here. We can change on the check the temperature. We can maybe make it a little bit more cooler here. Right, that's cool. Because again, I'm trying to create this. It's feeling of dark and mysterious kind of like feeling instead of it and then uh, what else uh, yeah color grading for the globals I can go to the saturation and contrast 
for saturation i'm gonna go for hsv and make the saturation a little bit lower okay and then contrast can be a bit higher all right cool mm. Don't need some mobile thing here. I guess that's that's it. I don't want it to also be like crazy on the post processing, but you can try to drag those things around to you know have some really interesting effects, film effect like this, <laughs> to basically grading it somehow. Yeah, to have some fun with it, I guess. But nonetheless, that's the you know all the basics you can do now to. Uh, makes things looks a bit more interesting, All right? And let's see the key light here. I think I can tweak the shadow of the key light a bit more. Um, let's see. So shadow bias, maybe just no, oh, cannot make it too low. Maybe we can have also the contact shadow. Yeah, that's actually much better. <laughs> Because it was not having that. Mm, that's making it look so much better now. Yeah, with the hair also. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, what else? Shadow filter sharpen to make the shadow sharper. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay. When I get too close, you can see how it kind of like the shadow starts to disappear, and it's not very good. The more I do that bias, the worse it becomes. So maybe 0 0.05 to just get it a little bit better. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? Um, right. So maybe one last thing to talk up to talk about in the next video, which is give the the model some smoothness. If you go really close, you can see geometries, right? So what we can do is we can get the displacement map from ZBrush, uh, and then we can apply that also here inside of Unreal Engine. Okay, see you next time.